Everyone saw the tower. Everyone. There was no missing it. Bethany found herself outside the bookstore, not even remembering leaving. She looked around at all the people pointing and shouting about the Magister's Tower and couldn't speak, almost couldn't breathe, like she couldn't remember how. I'd never actually seen it from the outside before, Keel said from beside her. It's usually hanging off the bottom side of a cliff, so it's not the easiest thing to sightsee. The actual one, I mean. He paused. Or maybe this is the only actual one if the other one's made up. You did make my life a bit more confusing, didn't you? I, I don't... I know, Keel said, patting her on the shoulder. This isn't going to be fun for you, but look on the bright side. When things are as bad as they can get, what's there to worry about? She slowly turned toward him, fighting off the extremely strong desire to strangle him where he stood. This... this is going to be everywhere. The news will cover, the police are going to come, and your teacher... Magista will not be too happy when things happen. Bethany's voice got louder and louder as she went. And I can't even imagine what this means. I don't ever even thought he'd do this. So how much worse is this going to get? She grabbed Keel's black shirt and pulled him close. You have no idea how much more I can worry about. Keel took a step back, his eyes wide. That was impressive, he told her. But I really do think you're going about this all wrong. Two news vans sped past them on the street, heading toward the mansion. Bethany just waved her hand at them, giving them a see look. Forget about that for now, Keel said. Remember when Chom and I are trapped in the future? Bethany shook her head impatiently. I've never read your books, and now is it the time? And you do remember how... Wait, what? I've never read your books, Bethany shouted. I don't know what happened to you in book two. I have no idea what you saw in book three, and I couldn't care less whatever you went down in book five. You're angry, Keel told her calmly. So I'm going to forgive you what you just said. Anyway, when Charm and I went into the future, what did I just say? On our time machine has been destroyed by Dr. Verity's great-great-grandson, and we realized there was no way back, Keel continued. Things looked dark, and that was after all that we had learned. Well, my own personal future hadn't turned out so great either. But that's what I decided that sometimes you have to embrace the bad to find the good. He winked at her. Think about it. She slapped his arm over and over. That doesn't mean anything! We got home, Bethany, because we realized that if we changed the future's future, someone would eventually come along to stop us. So, we started messing up everything we could, and soon enough, along came the future's version of Time Police to fix things. Soon as we they were distracted, we stole their time machine and used to get back our present. Bethany stopped slapping him to stare at him open-mouthed. Do you have any idea how little that makes sense? So, Keel said with a grin, it worked. And it worked because I embraced the problem and made it work for me. That's real magic. No. Real magic is when you make something happen that's physically impossible. Well, sure, that too. That's real magic. But this is realer magic. No, it's not that either. That word doesn't even exist. So, in a way, that word is magic by your definition. He winked again. Now, do you want to argue some more or do you want to fix this? She glared at him, then looked back at the tower. Fix this? Fix this? They've passed fix this when Owen had started talking to fictional characters. This was so beyond fix this that there was no fixing this at all. A man stepped up next to them dressed in a Hawaiian shirt and shorts despite the coolness. He lifted his camera to take a picture then grinned at Bethany. You know, Jonathan Porterhouse keeps saying he won't make a movie but I bet that's what this is. Looks like a set to me, doesn't it? What's a movie? Keel whispered. No! She whispered back. These people can't be saying this. Can't you use a forget spell on these people or something? Won't work, Keel told her. Just try! Keel sighed and mumbled something and pointed at the man in the Hawaiian shirt. The man's eyes went blank for a moment, then he shook his head as if to try to clear a fog. He turned to Bethany to say something, only to abruptly notice the enormous tower of black and silver up on the hill. What the... he said. Do you see that? It didn't work! Do it again! Bethany hissed. Keel pointed at the tower. He's just going to keep saying, 
do it again! I could only do magic once without a spell book, Keel told her. Now, it so happens that I do have this spell written down on my belt pouches, mostly because... Bethany shoved his belt back to him and stamped her foot while she waited for him to find the right page in his pouch. Well, he made comments like, Huh, forgot I had this one. And, ooh, that reminds me of... Forget it. Finally, he pulled out the right page and glanced over the spell. His body began to glow and he unleashed the forget spell again at the man in the Hawaiian shirt. The man's eyes blanked out once more and he shook his head just like last time. This time, Bethany grabbed his shirt and pulled him around so he wasn't facing the tower. The man gave her an odd look. Why? Why would you do that? He took a step away, then noticed the tower out of the corner of the eye. What the... Did you see... No! Bethany screamed. I don't! It's not there! Keel grabbed her arm and pulled her away from the Hawaiian-shirted man as Bethany kept screaming about how the tower wasn't there. Finally, he raised a hand. I'm this close, just making you forget all this if you don't calm down, he told her. It make my life a lot easier, honestly. How are they supposed to not remember it if they keep saying it? Bethany said, her hands shaking. You need to make the tower invisible, like a big bubble all around Jonathan Porterhouse's mansion. You could do that, right? She grabbed his shoulders and looked him in the eye. Right? You know, this isn't my world or anything, he told her. So calm and infuriated her. But unless me being here somehow makes me much more powerful than usual, that's probably not going to happen. Just one side? Bethany begged. The side closest to town, can you do that? He sighed, then looked up at the tower with an appraising look. Well, I am pretty impressive, contrary to what I just told you. I'm sure I could handle at least one side, probably two if push came to shove. She shoved him hard. It came to shove when that tower popped up. Do it! As tall as you can, as you can, so no one says it. Keel gave her an annoyed look, then slowly spread his hands, chanting a spell. For a moment, she considered making him do all his magic in an alley, but at this point, with the tower and all, a boy in a Keel Nomenfoot costume doing magic probably would just make this all look like a publicity stunt for the non-existent movie. Keel finished his spell, and a bright light shot out from both his hands, weaving its way through the streets of the town and up into the hills. It poured over the tower or at least one side, maybe two. Then abruptly, tower and light both disappeared. Keel, meanwhile, swayed like he was about to faint. Bethany quickly grabbed his arm and steadied him. Told you I'm impressive, he said, sounding completely winded. Now, I'm impressive and tired. When did magic get be so exhausting? What's wrong with this place? That was amazing, she told him. Seriously, Keel, thank you. He smiled and she smiled back. Then she slowly began to push the forget spell page in his hand up toward his face so he could relearn it. No, he told her. Rest now, tired. You can rest when you've wiped the memories of everyone in town who saw the tower, she said. There's no time to wait. The people in those news vans will start filming soon, so we need to make them forget before the story becomes about how the tower not only appeared, but disappeared. Plus, who knows what the Magister is doing? Wait, what? Keel said, his eyes widening as he caught up with what she was saying. Everyone in town? Not everyone, she told him, shoving him toward the Hawaiian-shirted man, who now stared at Keel with a look of shock. No, actually, you're right. Everyone is better. Let's do everyone. But I'm so tired. Bethany grabbed his hand and held it toward the surprised man. Come on! You're Keel Noman Foot! When bad things happen, you embrace them! Or something! You really are pure evil, aren't you? Keel whispered, then read over this forget spell again. A white shirted man's face, a look of surprise, faded into a friendly smile that his eyes glazed over. Then he shook out the fog and continued on his way. One down, Bethany said as Keel dropped to his knees. Who's next? <laughs>